So we've obviously got the confirmation that 16 and 17 year olds are now going to be offered the vaccine. And they are. Of I love course... the way you say offered because it's not going to be an offer. It's going to be forced. How? Because they probably won't be able to go to school. They're all going. Um, they've tried. They being the government and the the pharmaceutical companies and the so on, Sage, all that lot. Um, well, you you can choose to have it, but you can't go on holiday. You can't go to concerts. You can't go to. Uh, football that, matches. That's, that's the problem I have. I'm pro-vaccine and I want people to take the vaccine. I understand people's concerns about children taking it. I do because obviously um, when it comes to there are there are conflicting pieces of medical advice. We spoke to a doctor the day before yesterday when I was sitting in for drive who uh, Dr. Paul McKay, who wrote a piece for the mail saying, look, it's perfectly safe for children to take it. They really should. And that it's for the greater good we then spoke to a doctor last night on uh, the drive program that i was uh, presenting and uh, she said the precise opposite mm. and that that is not what we should be uh, uh, doing that was dr ros jones retired pediatrician who said that and she was pro every other vaccine you know just to make sure that you yes. know because i know that there's a narrative at the moment that if you are questioning this vaccine you must be a complete anti-vaccine rubbish. nutter yeah. and she is a pediatrician she spent her life administering vaccines but she just has some reservations about the lack of long-term testing on this one and i think that's part of the problem is that you've got two conflicting credible people who have medical knowledge who are who are are, are giving sort of opposing knowledge on that and i do think we leave it to the medical professionals to sort of make those statements because you know you or i genuinely i don't think we know enough absolutely we don't know enough but and the fact... when you've got medical professionals both saying opposite things that's when i i imagine people are uh, i i i feel so sorry then what for do you do so what do you do sort of like say well one person says this and one person says that. i will choose to listen to the person that says it's completely okay absolutely that's the most irresponsible reaction that anybody could have it's unquestionably too dangerous or if in doubt my thing is if in doubt don't don't err on the side of caution until these things and one day one of those doctors who have opposing views one might be proved right the other one might be proved wrong how can you possibly make a decision when people don't yet know and there's no proof but, and... but do you do you feel the same when it comes to because i'm i'm pro vaccine for the adults because i i well i'm that, not I, I know you're not and that's fine i mean you have every right do not be pro vaccine. Well, I'm not sure that I but have any I, rights left anymore. Well, no, that, that's what I, I loathe. I want people like you, who I respectfully disagree with, to be able to openly have a debate about it. You will have your view. I will have mine. You may make me think differently. I may make you think differently. What I disagree with vehemently is that the role of the state is not, as far as I'm concerned, to say well, because you disagree, you are going to be denied some rights. Mm. Uh, you know, you are going to be denied entry to this venue. You are going to be denied entry and to And yet they to this wrap airport. it up as sort of like, but you can choose. But if you don't have it, you will not have access to. So it's just done in such a nasty, sort of sneaky little way. I can't stand this government. Well, I can't stand the policy that they're trying to right roll out and the out, brainwashing. As I pointed out the other day, what a sad indictment of the lack of trust towards this government if mm. you've got to bring in a vaccine passport to make people believe what you're saying then doesn't that go to show how much trust has broken down because there would have been a time when we had politicians whether you agreed with those politicians or not last night we debated thatcher a lot when we were talking about drive but there would have been a time where whether you trusted those politicians or not the fact that politicians and medical professionals were telling you to have a vaccine you would say well you know what i might not agree with them but i trust they have my best interests at heart but because boris johnson is such a proven and well-known liar mm. and i i 
say that. And all these U-turns. He's done so many U-turns. He's going round and round in circles. He's indecisive. He doesn't do his research properly. He mumbles and bumps his way through. He thinks that that's going to kind of get away with it. But he's not dealing with the actual issue at heart. Of course, because... because and he's, he's a hypocrite. He's Bojo the Clown. I mean, that's what he is. He's a total and utter Get him clown. out. I think that he is the worst Prime Minister... Ever. ...we have ever had. I agree. I think that people like me should have been listened to when I said that he will be the worst Prime Minister that we have ever had. He, he was has... good with Brexit, admittedly. He well, got, no, he he, got he, us no, there. No, he stuck a salesman in to get it over the line. He doesn't believe in Brexit anymore No, he didn't. He, ch- he jumped ship, didn't of he? Course, he was a Remainer to begin course, with. Of course. So he, he doesn't even know his own mind. And, and that is because we have a Prime Minister who is in an ideological vacuum. Mm. When the problem that Boris has, and it's something that I have said from day one, but most exposed by this pandemic, is that when you... Right. When you look at leaders like Thatcher, when you even look at leaders, I, I didn't know, I, I think he's he is terrible, but even leaders like Blair, even leaders like Cameron, they got to where they are based on a belief system, based mm. on an ideological framework. Now, you might, even Corbyn, you could say that for. Now, you might disagree with it vehemently. You might say that you absolutely loathe what they stand for, but they stand for something. And from that, every other decision comes. So if you're ideologically freedom-based and liberal, for instance, then your view on how to deal with the pandemic will be based on those ideological values. Well, yeah. Boris Johnson and you won't ha- err from that, will you? No. If you believe in something so strongly, you will just kind of carry on with that. You won't be swayed otherwise. But Boris Johnson has got to power with no values. Mm. Boris Johnson has got to power by He's saying... He's in the wind. ...by saying to whomever is in front of him that he agrees with them. Mm. Now, that's great. That gets you to a position of power. Well done him. He got there. But now it's a house of cards because it's like, well, I don't know about you, but I've no idea what he believes in. I, I've not I one th- clue what he believes in. But the awful thing in. is, Chris, I don't think he knows. Of course. That's the terrible thing. Because I don't he's think never he had knows. to believe in anything. No, because he he's hasn't. just lied his way to get there. Yeah. And we are all suffering as a result because what he's doing is the health department is saying one thing and he's going that way and then the department of transport saying another thing so then he's going that way and then um, Sage is saying one thing so he's going that way and then Dominic Cummings will say something he's going that way because he has absolutely no framework no framework no leadership any sense he's of belief. indecisive uh, it's, it, he doesn't do his research he's not well informed he's a terrible terrible mistake and he's got to go. And then and, and then he wonders why people... This goes back to exactly where we're doing, because I'm not just slagging him off for the sake of it, as I do every week. But then that goes back to vaccine passports. Now, if mm. you didn't, if you weren't that leader, you wouldn't need vaccine passports. You wouldn't need them. No. People would believe you. You know, the thing is, Christo, I mean, I've got a vaccine passport, but not this one, from years and years and years ago. And it's all dog-eared and everything, a little yellow thing. Because I've travelled far and wide. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I don't agree with this at the moment because it's experimental and there's not enough information. And I think it's eventually going to be proved wrong. We've got to go to a break. But people would argue with you that this has had billions spent on it and that it's had concentrated research. It hasn't had billions of years spent on it. No, but it's had much more concentrated research. That would be what people would argue no because you can't that. concentrate long term no can you? i agree with that so but it, that, that's what the argument would be towards you 